Chalk lines have been around a long time. In fact, they've probably been around about, <laughs> I think they've probably been around about 30 minutes less time than string lines have been around. It wasn't long before we realized it's not just enough to be able to stretch a string, but I'd like to be able to leave a mark where that string is indicating straight. And there's a couple things, you know, there is an ink that can be used and has been used to leave an indelible line off of a string, but in construction, what we are used to using now and what has become standard is chalk on a cotton line to make a chalk line. One of the first mistakes that people make with a chalk box, that's what these are called, chalk boxes, chalk reels, chalk line reels, chalk line, is you get a new chalk line and you're in a hurry, you know people are waiting on you, and your old one broke and there's no time and everybody's frustrated, so you tear it out of the plastic, and you figure out where the door is, the opening, and you see if you can tear off your fingernails getting that open. And you look in there and there's a brand new white cotton line. And it's not very big. A finer string will make a finer line. And it also doesn't hold as much chalk. And this is not all puffed up with chalk yet, so it's nice and small and clean, and it's time to fill it up. And people think, well, I don't want to be going back and filling this up again in 15 minutes. So I'm really gonna fill it up. And they decide what color they're gonna use. And this, I've lost my red line, so I got two blacks and a white. I don't even have a blue line. And so they think, well, I'm gonna make it count. And so they start putting chalk in there. And they just fill it up. And then as soon as they get done filling it up, they close the door and they pull the line out and it binds up. If you overfill your chalk box, you're not going to get that string a third of the way out before it just locks up because there's too much chalk. So just put some in there. Don't get carried away. You know, I don't know what the amount is. You know, maybe, maybe five or six tablespoons. And close the door and knock it around. Shake it around a little bit and then you'll look in there. Yeah, it looks like there's chalk on the line, but there's only chalk on the outside portion of the line. Hook it onto something and turn it up so that the chalk is down at the gate at the end. You'll know that's happening because it's going out on the ground. We'll talk about that in a minute. And you tap your chalk box so that the loose chalk in there is coming down and is beginning to coat the string. Now I guess this is all pretty intuitive, but if you put too much chalk in there the first time, by the time you got out to here and start reeling it up, it's going to be jammed up. So hold it down so that it is coating the line as the line comes back in. Okay, now there's a little thing. Turn the handle out when you're pulling it out so that it's not spinning around and hanging up on your fingers. You know, turn it out like that. Let's reel it out a little bit and see what we've got. Oh, look, no chalk at all. So now's the time probably to put some more chalk in there. I'm going to take a chance since the first 15 feet is pretty well covered with chalk. I'm going to put a little more chalk in here. This is where you really jam up a chalk line. Putting too much chalk in there to leave room for the string to come in. Tap it down. Now we're beginning to have a chalk line. Now here's the next thing about a chalk line. They're gonna get wet, but they're never quite as good after they've been wet as they were before they got wet. Yeah, we're getting there. One more time. About the third time you put some chalk in there, you're beginning to be in business. Now how does a chalk line work? Well, clearly what it does, it holds some chalk on the string, and when you snap it, dislodges that chalk onto your substrate at the point of contact. Let's see what that looks like with a red chalk line. Hold it down, tap it a few times. Now with a freshly charged chalk box like that, sometimes it's a good idea to pop it in the air just a little bit so that all you have is the chalk that's actually stuck to the line Snap it. Snap it twice if you want. Nice crisp line. 
If you pull out a chalk box, a used chalk line that's just been filled up, and you snap it without sort of flicking the line first, you're gonna get a line about a quarter of an inch wide, or at least too wide to be really accurate. So chalk lines have been changing a lot in the last, I don't know, 15 or 18 years, 20 years. You know, for a long time, like for thousands of years, chalk lines were one to one. That is one revolution of the crank gave you one revolution of the reel. And that's fine, except it is slow, particularly when your chalk line gets short and there's not much string in there. I mean, you gotta, you gotta do a lot of cranking to get, to get that thing home. And so some enterprising soul had the good idea of, hey, fishing reels have changed. I mean, fishing reels are not one-to-one -one anymore. And so let's, let's put some sort of a gear drive on a chalk line and cut out minutes, perhaps over the course of a week, hours, of turning the crank on a chalk box. Good idea. So here's a brand new Irwin of some kind. They, most of them now have a, a feature where you can actually press a button and it, it's free wheel. It's like the winch on a cat that has free wheel, right? I mean, that's handy. And then, I mean, it's, that's great. But here's a word of warning. If you work in a hostile environment, that is, it's wet or it's muddy or it's, you know, really dirty or you're going to drop it, they die. When they're wet, dry, wet, dry, wet, dry, that gear mechanism gets stiffer and stiffer and finally it just, you throw it away in disgust and go back to your one-to-one. -one. Or if you're a form setter. Now, a, a, con a form setter can keep one of these alive for a while and if he's more meticulous than I am, perhaps it'll last him a good long time. But I finally gave up as soon as I stepped off of doing layout and residential framing because they just didn't last. Might work better for you. But when they're working, they work really well. I, I need a blue chalk box, so let's, let's put some blue chalk in this blue box. Remember, don't put too much in. Oh yeah, that is fast. So yeah, I mean, get a gear driven if you want, and then when it jams up, throw it away and get a single action. But they're pretty nice. So let's talk about the difference between blue chalk and red chalk, or actually between blue chalk and the indelible chalks. So a chalk line's a great tool, and nobody thinks of it as being dangerous, and it's not dangerous to the person, but a chalk line is dangerous to the job because there are at least two chalks that are permanent markers. That is, if you snap a line with black or red on a substrate that does not cover, that's part of the permanent appearance of a structure, you've wrecked it because that chalk will never come off. You can scrub it, you can pressure wash it, you can do whatever you want, it's on there. So anytime you get out a black chalk box or a red chalk box, you gotta be careful. You gotta find a metal space that says, hmm, you know, this is worse than, or at least very similar to carrying a can of spray paint in your hand and dropping it on the ground or leaving it on the job overnight and the neighbor kid comes by and finds it and tags the site of your foundation. It's about like that. So if this place that you need a straight line is a place that needs to be cleaned off and is gonna be exposed, there are some other colors. The first of those colors and really the go-to substitute for blue or black is blue. Okay, blue is dark enough that you can see it, but it's, of us nature and um, the characteristics of blue are that it will, with a little effort, clean off. And in the meantime, it'll stand up to, little, to a little abuse. So blue is okay as an all-around kind of a chalk. If you like purple, put a little black in there with it and you'll have a more indelible line that won't come off. So blue is a good color to keep pristine. I mean, keep it clean for those situations. If you're inside the house, if you're a finished carpenter and you're inside, you need a line maybe, you know, across a painted wall or even on carpet. If you need a straight line on carpet, you can use white, white chalk, just like what's on a chalkboard. Let's make a line with that. It's a very fragile line. It goes away with a, just a puff of air, which is a good thing when you're snapping it across Mrs. Uh, McElhenney's carpet. But in the meantime, It'll give you the way to do some work. Now, I just made a mistake there that would have been a mistake on another job that I don't know if 
we cut it on the camera, but when you're pulling the chalk line out, you need to be a little careful because that, that vibration, that oscillation, the twitching in the line will knock all the chalk off, and more importantly, it'll slap chalk on surfaces that you never intended to get chalk on. So you gotta be a little careful when you're letting your chalk line reel out. So these are the four colors of chalk that I use most of the time. Black and red and blue and white. The white gets used rarely, but sometimes it'll solve a problem. My go-to chalk is black when I'm working outside. It'll stand some rain. I mean, you can rain on this deck and the blue will be gone. The white never existed. The red's gonna fade, but it'll always be there and it'll kind of get whiter. But a nice tight black line is, is useful on almost any substrate. Anytime you're working with someone in construction, there will develop, and in many cases already exists, sort of a protocol for the way these two people working together relate to each other and what part of what task goes to what person. Even snapping chalk lines, particularly when you're doing a lot of layout, when you're snapping a lot of wall lines, two people using one box. And the first rule is this, when someone hands you a chalk box and expects you to take the end of it to hold or snapping a line, don't just grab it because when he turns around and walks away and the chalk box hangs up, it'll pull out of your hand and the box hit, the string hits the ground and it makes this funny looking wobbly red line or blue line and it's no good. So anytime someone hands you a chalk box expecting you to take the end of the line, wrap it around your finger, just like that. Like every time, just wrap it around your finger and it's gonna save a little frustration and frustration burns time. The other rule is this, Two people working together, one chalk box, somebody pulls a chalk box out of their bags, hands it to the other person, the other person grabs it. Box man walks, box man pops. That means that the person who just received the end of the line will bend over and hold the, the line on the mark, and the person who has the chalk box in their hand walks to the other end of the wall. That establishes a situation where the person with the box is sort of the controlling the work organizing person for right then. They come together at one end of the wall, he hands the, the end of the line to his assistant and walks to the other end. Okay, now everybody's in position. Paying attention so the line doesn't hit the ground. Everybody bends over at about the same time. Let me simulate it like this. Everyone goes down to the ground at about the same time. Make sure that everybody's on the mark. Got it? Got it? Yes. Box man pops. The box man is a person who snaps it at least the first time. And then typically the person on the other end will snap it back. That is, they will pop it from their end also. Box man walks, box man pops. So a common problem with chalk lines is they break. The string is not strong, it's absorbent and it doesn't stretch much. And so they break and they get shorter and shorter and shorter and the time finally comes when I think this chalk box is probably, this chalk line is probably 30 feet long. It's not long enough for much. I don't know if this one's much longer, but when a line gets too short and you're in the middle of a project, maybe you've got to snap a big long baseline, I don't know, on the edge of a slab or something, and your chalk box is too short and you're frustrated and you can't find a new one and it's a problem. It's no problem because you've got a dry line. A dry line is just a string. It's a string line that has neither chalk nor ink. Um, on it. And so you can take the dry line and like we've already talked about in our pro tips how to use a string video, that is a nasty knot. Who put that in there? I don't know, but you can always stretch a dry line tight, make some intermediate marks along a distance that are close enough together that your stubby chalk box will stretch from mark to mark. So a dry line working with a chalk box can facilitate snapping a line much longer than the amount of string that you happen to have inside your chalk box at the moment. Structures can be complicated. Construction can be comp complicated, but most of the time it's just work. And most of the tools that are used most of the time are simple tools. A chalk line, a chalk box is a simple tool, but you've got to have it and not just one. You're going to need an assortment of colors and you're just going to have to know how to use them. Thanks for watching and keep up the good work.